What with the constant overhanging threat of global warming, the nuclear arsenals of major world powers, deadly superbugs, and the ever-present possibilities of an imminent solar flare, volcanic eruption, or errant asteroid, the existing on Earth is a bit stressful. But do you know what's a good way to take your mind off it? Video games! Hooray! And even better, video games about the many different ways in which we as a species could meet our untimely and abrupt demise. Most lists of games about the end of the world invariably include your usual suspects. The Fallout series, The Last of Us, Borderlands if you want to stretch the definition a little bit, but this wouldn't be a triple jump list without us needlessly complicating our own jobs, and besides, you've probably played those already, and you might need a different game to scratch that post-apocalyptic itch. Do get that checked out, by the way. So put away your hot and spicy Last of Us Part 2 opinions and settle down to enjoy some lesser-known games, indie titles, and often overlooked visions of the bleakest possible future. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great post-apocalyptic video games that aren't Fallout. Number 10. Wasteland. We'll get this one out of the way first, as it's the game that ended up birthing Fallout when the developers were unable to make a sequel under that name. Fans of Fallout will find a lot of familiar territory here, such as the fact that, even after life on Earth as we know it has ended, there will still be heavily armed men trying to get up in everybody's business. Released in 1988 for the Apple II, Wasteland is a text input game set in 2087, 89 years after nuclear war has decimated the landscape. Here, the remnants of the US Army, now known as Desert Rangers, act as peacekeepers among the various smatterings of human civilization still clinging to what used to be America. You control one of these teams, guiding them around until they find something to stick their noses into. During one of these missions, you stumble across a pre-war artificial intelligence that is plotting to amass a cyborg army and replace humanity with its superior half-robot, half-meat hybrids. Whoa. In order to stop it, you have to collect enough technology and weapons to attack the military base the AI is hiding in, then destroy the base by melting down its nuclear reactor. Because if there's one thing this world needs, it's more volatile nuclear disaster zones. Its two more modern sequels are great as well, and they don't require knowledge of the first game to enjoy them. That's great news for anyone more afraid of chunky old pixels than they are of radiation. Number 9. End Zone – A World Apart While most post-apocalyptic games follow one or two characters surviving in the world, some give you a much larger, holistic goal, such as rebuilding society from scratch. In this game, Earth has been turned into a wasteland, again, after a group of incredibly well-organized terrorists simultaneously blew up nuclear power plants across the globe, plunging the world into chaos. In order to escape the disaster, mankind fled into underground facilities known as end zones, and that was in the year… let me check it out… oh, 2021. Good. 150 years later, humans have finally decided that the coast is clear and it's time to emerge back onto the surface. In case you thought that might be easy, you'll have to deal with radioactive rain, extreme climate change because naturally that's still around, and the innate human need to punch each other to death, sometimes with bullets. With a literal caravan of people, you need to work out how to survive and establish a workable civilization. In addition to finding food, water, and shelter, you can also build schools and pubs, which is good because we can all agree that the key pillars of any healthy society are education and getting completely wasted. More like wasted land, right fellas? <laughs> Fella? Number 8. Everybody's gone to the rapture. It's a sunny, clear day in the Yorton Valley in Shropshire, and everybody's gone to Piccadilly Circus. Wait, sorry, I was miles away. I mean, the rapture. They've gone to the rapture, like it says in the title. Also, that title is about all we should tell you if you're not keen on spoilers, so skip to the time code on your screen if you're interested in playing this one fresh. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is the only game on this list that doesn't really focus on survival. That ship has well and truly sailed here, but rather on working out what happened. Gradually, you'll learn that a mysterious energy known as the Pattern has infected everybody and caused them to vanish, cigarettes still smoking in ashtrays and washing still hung out on lines. Brought to Earth through the Valley's Observatory, the Pattern spreads like an infection throughout the population, causing nosebleeds, headaches, and tons of dead birds to fall from the sky. All portents, no doubt, of very good things. Eventually, it learns to travel through telephone lines, electrical wiring, and radio waves, and it may be responsible for the disappearance of the entire population of Earth. While the pattern claims that the people it consumes are with their loved ones, it could be a comfortable lie that the very hungry catter pattern there you go, wants us to believe so that we will go more willingly into its maw. Which is it? Do I really want to know? I do not. Good game, though. 
Number 7. 60 Seconds This is a more light-hearted game. Well, as light-hearted as any game about nuclear war can get. During the Cold War, the British government set up a public alert system that would give people four minutes to prepare should a missile be launched by the USSR. The government in 60 seconds is either far less or far more optimistic, giving you only, well, 60 seconds. You have exactly one minute to grab as many things in your house as you can, like a profoundly traumatizing version of Supermarket Sweep. What you grab is all you will have once the world ends, food, water, first aid kits, and your family, who don't quite seem to grasp the urgency of the situation. What? in the Burt Newtons get in the kill. Every single item can mean the difference between death and survival. No food or water, you're going to die unless someone goes outside. Go outside without a weapon or gas mask, you're not likely to come back. No entertainment, you'll go mad and run out of the bunker, and also be unable to trade with anyone who comes looking for help. If 60 Seconds teaches us anything, it's that resource management is not an easy game when you don't have many pieces to play with. Number 6. Sheltered they say you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. But if that's true, then why does Sheltered give me the opportunity to customize parent? Huh? Checkmate, anyone who says that. Of course, the main goal in Sheltered is survival. Hashing out an existence in your bunker, fixing your camper van, keeping your pet alive, and tracking down family and friends. Unlike 60 Seconds, Sheltered doesn't just release your wards into the wilderness and passively hope they'll come back from wherever it is they go. You plot their route to the nearby structures yourself. It's like the walking minigame in Nintendogs, but with greater risk of debilitating radiation sickness. It's a challenging game full of difficult questions, but the most difficult question of all might be how so many people have access to submerged, lead-lined bunkers, allowing them to survive in a world-ending catastrophe. Where are you finding these things? I've only ever found bits of clay and plastic when digging in my garden. Number 5. Lisa the Painful Trigger warning for child abuse and generally difficult subject matter. Yeah, it's one of those games. The Lisa series is pretty heavy, essentially being about neglectful parents and a perpetuated cycle of abuse and violence. Lisa the Painful is the first of the series to have a solid plot, however. An incident called The Flash has somehow turned the world into a wasteland as well as wiping out the women. Left to their own devices, men have gotten themselves into all kinds of trouble. The main character, however, has a daughter. Sort of. He finds a baby girl in the wasteland and raises her, or at least tries to, thanks to his own personal parental trauma related to his dad and his sister Lisa. A bizarre turn-based RPG, Lisa relies on random chance and team management. You will also make decisions in hopes of keeping your party alive, such as whether to take the drug Joy or whether to sacrifice a teammate or your own arm to roving bandits. It's like Earthbound if Ness were a 40-something drug addict raising an orphan. Call me Nintendo, my pitch for Mother 4 is wild. Number 4. Fallen London and Sunless Sea Two games for the price of one. Yes, I'm feeling just that generous today, so enjoy an additional helping of post-apocalyptic misery on us. Cataclysms are never all that enjoyable when they are happening. No, you have to wait around a bit before it gets really fun, which is why most post-apocalyptic stories are set sometime into the future when things are a bit more adventuresome. Speaking of which, 40 years prior to the start of Fallen London, the titular city fell into the Neath, a vast cavern below the Earth's crust. The Neath also seems to defy the laws of physics, nature, and geography. Every so often, a new city tumbles into the Neath, falling into the exact same place and crushing the previous city beneath its weight. Hang on. Beneath. Neath. I had, right, okay, I get it now. Anyway, this has happened five times so far, orchestrated by the mysterious Masters of the Bazaar. While Fallen London is a browser game that requires a lot of reading, Sunless Sea and its sequel, Sunless Skies, are proper survival RPGs set within the same universe. The post-apocalyptic genre usually features the world ending in a way that involves most of humanity dying, but I would say that London plummeting into a mysterious underground cavern and reforming into a completely new societal structure is enough of a catastrophe to get out. And if you disagree, tell that to the residents of the now subterranean city of London. Number 3. The Final Station it is the 106th year after the disastrous event known as the First Visitation, when many strange giant metal capsules fell to Earth. Despite the lengthy gap since the last incident, humanity still hasn't gotten its act together as they are only now running second visitation drills and just getting round to building a giant robot to protect themselves. You are a train driver, entrusted with a special mission to transport a mysterious bit of cargo. This is, coincidentally, just when the second visitation begins, meaning time is of the essence to transport 
whatever it is to, to wherever you're going. While your main tasks are making sure your train runs smoothly and reaches its destination stop by stop, you also have to keep your passengers alive and fight back against black sludge creatures. With the exposition scattered through various bits of dialogue, the story can be rather vague at times. Don't expect to be spoon-fed lore. Which, by the way, we definitely consider a plus, because you need to be very careful what you eat after the apocalypse. Also, the final station was savvy enough to predict the need to stockpile toilet paper, which is something that most developers overlooked in the genre until that happened. Number 2. Ministry of Broadcast From Big Brother to the masked singer, masked dancer, masked dating, TV's gone a bit off the rails. After the near-complete annihilation of society, a totalitarian dictatorship has built a wall to separate the broadcasters and receivers. No one is allowed to cross the wall without the proper visa, and the only way to get one is to take part in The Wall Show, a reality show like Total Wipeout, only without the foam mats. Contestants are separated into civilians and cops, with cops acting as enforcers. The only problem here is that you, the player, are unsorted and you have no shoes. The game is a sort of meta-commentary on the genre and on video game protagonists in general, with contestants turning against you after you push them into spike pits and getting them bitten by dogs too many times. Turns out that your self-interested protagonist ways aren't great for making friends. Still, at least you have an inexplicable talking crow for company, although he does seem to take a bit too much pleasure in seeing you die. It's a bleak one, but Ministry of Broadcast at least has a memorable and unique take on the situation. Number 1. Flotsam Okay, so, bad news, the world has been flooded. Good news, you've survived! Actually, that's probably just more bad news, sorry. Having ignored the scientists who have been screaming at us for decades, sea levels have risen and have completely submerged most of the world's landmass, leaving humanity adrift in a vast, unending ocean. Certainly hope you can swim, or again, maybe it's best if you can't. Positive outcomes are so relative in games like these. In Flotsam, you are in charge of a ragtag group of humans and have to help them survive on their rickety little ship. Hopping between schools of fish and small islands, you try to live a bit longer than most of humanity did, all while the crystal clear water shows you the remnants of cities far below you. However, the rubbish that caused this mess in the first place has a tendency to float, giving you a lot of wood, plastic, and other litter to use to help rebuild a new, slightly soggy civilization. As of writing this list, the game is still in early access, with recent updates bringing more content and mechanics, including polluted fish. Because, yeah, we all live on boats now, but it's probably worth being reminded of why that's the case.